It, it's always been something which has been my passion. I mean, I've taught, I've gone into teaching in between times because there was no opportunity to, to work full time in the theatre um, up until, I suppose, the early 1960s, uh, which is when I first met these two guys that I'm working with in this particular production. I was um, played Goro and Madame Butterfly and other little characters all through all the, throughout the operas and then gradually downstage asked me to join them in Wellington and I, that's when I first worked with Ken and I first met Ray of course with Downstage in the 60s and I did about three or four plays with Downstage. And in those days of course theatre was about people who you never met in the street, they owned country houses and things like that and that's really what theatre was until eventually in the 60s the <laughs> kitchen sink drama started and we started to look at ourselves a little closer. But then I was lucky enough to be in at the beginning of the modern professional theatre, as Ken was. But we kept our jobs. And the funny thing is both Ken, George, and myself, the three of us, were school teachers. Uh, when we were such young men and there weren't any older actors, around, we had to grey our hair in order to uh, play the characters we were playing. We don't have to do that anymore. The, the original title of the play is um, Le, Le Vent au Peuplier, the, the wind in the poplars. And so I think they didn't want the name to call it the wind in the poplars eh, because it sounds like the wind in the willows. But these three characters are very like the wind in the willows. The character I play in Heroes is, is Philippe. Um, uh, he's been in this uh, retirement home, which is a convent run by nuns. Uh, he's been there for 10 years. I'm playing Henri which is the same, almost the same as my surname, actually, Henri. And um, he's been 25 years in this home. He's, been the, he's the longest one here who's, uh, I suppose, taken charge of the terrace now. He's sort of the king, the king of the terrace and has the has this say as to who else comes onto this terrace. I play Gustav, who is, of the three, he is probably the, the most cantankerous, the, he's the, the, the latest arrival, he's only been in the veterans home six months, very opinionated. Uh, and he tries to uh, compromise all the time and e ease the ground, not always successfully. He has shown, as, as one of the characters says about him, remarkable courage during the First World War and obviously he is shell-shocked. But they all have um, an ailment of some sort, uh, some of which are physically obvious and uh, some of which are uh, not so much so. I mean, one has terrible agoraphobia and can't go anywhere. But uh, my ailment is, is simply the, uh, the presence of the shrapnel in the head which causes him to lose consciousness at the most extraordinary times. <laughs> There are these delightful aspects to the character which are revealed slowly during the play. Yes, Heroes is currently one of my most favourite plays. A, because it's given me the opportunity to work with some good old friends. Uh, and if you spend each day working with good old friends, it's not like a job at all. It's, it's, it's fun. I suppose for the patrons coming along, it'll be, um, for the older ones, it'll be a sort of maybe a little touch of nostalgia or something that they would know a lot about, um, have reminiscences about. And, um, and even for the younger ones too, they would recognise something within these old men, you know, the grumpy old <laughs> men or their sense of humour and, um, and the things that old people say. But what they will get is a whole range of emotions. They will laugh. Mm. do that a lot, they will think, and we've had one or two people at some points get quite sad because Stoppard and Siblerea, the original French writer, and Stoppard's translation is so good. <laughs> 